Hey there, welcome back. I'm Dr. Katherine Colleen, and we're going to be talking in this video about what the stages are and how to recognize them. The first thing that I want you to do as we go through these stages is I want you to recognize where you are spending most of your time. And it may not be just one stage, you might be spending most of your time in bouncing between two different stages or three different stages. It all works, it's all human. So first try to recognize yourself. And then if that works out pretty well, then you can try to recognize some other people that you know. And I'll bet as we go through the stages, you're gonna say, oh yeah, I know a guy like that. I know someone like that. Do not judge <laughs> because we're all human and we're all going through those stages. So no matter what stage someone else is in, you will be there soon enough too. So make sure you keep that in mind. So let's talk about what the stages are. Stage number one and stage number 11 are almost identical, but there's a big difference. So we'll start with stage number one. Stage number one is like a newborn, very open. So literally, when you are first born, this is the stage you are in. It is everything is me. You define yourself as everything. Your parents are not separate from you. You don't feel separate from them. You don't think you're a separate person or a separate entity. Everything is me. Um, it's a pretty beautiful, happy state to be in. Uh, and later, when you revisit this in your later years, um, it's a very joyous place to be in. Um, and it comes with some added benefits that we'll talk about in a minute. But that's where we all begin. Stage two. Stage two is where you're trying to separate yourself from experiences and reflexes. For example, as a small child, you would, you would think, I'm hungry, and eventually you realize, I am not the hunger, I, I am me, and I have hunger. So what you used to be is now an object. What was subject is now an object. Uh, and this comes from Keegan. Very good stuff. Um, so you start to detach and say, hmm, I am not my hunger. I am not my experiences. Now, as we get older, it's very common to get stuck in experiences. And so stage two is kind of where you are when you're stuck in an experience. You're retelling the story to yourself about what happened recently. Do you believe what they did? Do you believe what happened to me? This happened to me. This happened to me. And you're stuck and you're stuck and you're reliving the story over and over in your mind. You are in stage two. This can be a very difficult place because if the experience was a negative one, this does not make you feel good to be reliving it over and over again. If the experience was a positive one, there can be some utility in bringing it back around and, and reveling in it a little bit and enjoying that and using that to boost your mood. Okay, stage three. In stage three, I am my needs. The first time that we see this, uh, or is with toddlers, <laughs> two-year-olds. <laughs> and then we see it again, typically with teenagers. And then we see it again and again and again and again. Anytime your needs are not being met, you will be pulled back to stage three. I am my needs. This can be as simple as you didn't get enough sleep last night. You're totally sleep deprived. You're stressed out. Uh, you're not getting enough food or the right food or you're getting too much food or who knows what your systems or your biological systems are out of whack. That will do it. If you're sick, you don't feel good, that will do it. You'll be right back in stage three and you become your needs. You need to take care of yourself for a little bit. You need to make sure that you get what you need. Now, needs can take a lot of different forms. That's going to be a whole other video. But you have the obvious ones like sleep and food and uh, some sense of financial stability and all the things we expect. But you also may have emotional needs. If you are a parent, maybe you need to feel like you're doing a good job. That's a need too. Emotional needs, intellectual needs, physical needs, financial needs, all kinds of needs. And so that's why it's so common for people to be in stage three uh, and to revisit it so often. Stage four is other people have needs too. 
<laughs> this is um, where a lot of your uh, people who are very giving, your humanitarians, uh, can get stuck here quite often in stage four. Uh, it's where you worry so much about other people's needs, and that's beautiful, and that's good. And as a leader and as a manager, you need to do that. But you've also got to make sure that your own needs get met, too. But that's stage four, when you're very focused on other people's needs. Stage five, oh, this is a dangerous one. And I'll bet you know more people in this stage, more adults in this stage than you know any other stage. Stage five, I am my ideology. Now, an ideology here is a belief system. It's not just political. Lately, it may seem like it's a, a lot political. And that's where most people um, focus their ideologies is on political issues, but you could have a political ideology, you can have a religious ideology, you can have a social ideology, just about the way you think is the best way to live your life. You can have all kinds of different ideologies. It's just your set of beliefs and rules about how you should think you think you should live your life and how you think you should proceed. So you've developed this set of rules on how to live your ideology. You need this. Psychologically, you need it just to get through the day and make decisions. You can't not have some kind of ideology, some kind of rule set that you live by. And so a lot of people get stuck here, especially uh, if it's an election year. Now, the problem with this is when you're in stage five, your predominant emotions can range from arrogance to, you know, I'm right and everybody else is wrong, to offense and anger. And you don't want your work teams coming in offended and angry and belligerent and divisive and us versus them. Ooh, no, you do not need this encroaching in your business. So knowing that the majority of adults spend a lot of their time in stage five, you're going to have to work to help them when they come in the doors of your business. You're going to have to help them either get to stage six, live and let live. That's a nice one. Or float them back to stage four. Others have needs too. And there are things you can do to help them bump temporarily out of stage five, at least so that they can focus on their work. And we'll talk about that in another video. Okay, stage six, live and let live. Ah. This is a beautiful place. If only we could all be there. In, in stage six, live and let live, you have an ideology that you use to get through the day and you're still largely identified with it. But you know what? Everybody do their thing. You do your thing. I'll do my thing. It'll all be fine. And that's stage six. Um, plenty of very cooperative communities are built around stage six. Good stuff. Now, in stage six, there may be a little bit of a whisper of some little bit of dissatisfaction, some little bit of frustration, a sense that there's a little bit of something, something you're missing, but you're okay with it. For now, it's okay. You're having a good time. You're living your life. Many people will never exit this stage until the moment of their death, and that's okay. Because to move on from stage six, you have to choose to wake up and go through what's called the dark night of the soul. <laughs> Stage seven. Stage seven. Most of us have been through it. If you made it to your 30s or 40s, you've probably been through at least one cycle of stage seven. This is called the dark night of the soul. That's that's a really bad way to think about it because the first time you go through it, it's hard. You're questioning everything, absolutely everything about your life. You don't even know what's real anymore. And it's usually the result of some major incident in your life, the major breakup of a relationship or a marriage, major financial difficulty, the death of a parent, um, some massive injustice in your life is usually what triggers this. And you're just questioning everything. And the first time you go through it, it's really hard to be questioning everything. But the second time you go through it, and the third time you go through it, and the fourth time you go through it, because this is a cycle, right? You're not getting away from this. When you come back to it again, it's easier. And you come back to it again, and it's almost fun. And then you start to learn how to incorporate it and enjoy your questioning everything. And this is where real 
innovation comes from. Real innovation, questioning everything and finding new ways to think about it. So stage seven is not all bad if you're willing to go there. This is where the good ideas come from. All right, stage eight. From here, we start to have a much heavier um, focus on spirituality. And because these videos are a little bit more for, for businesses and organizations, I'm not going to go into them as much. But take a look, read, uh, read the book, read the road, roadmaps, and learn about them for yourselves. But these are beautiful state. You would love to have somebody in stage 8, 9, 10, 11 working for you. Because 8, 9, 10, 11, as we come around the bottom of the cycle and back into the center, there is... These are happy, wonderful people. You feel you are a child of the universe, a child of, of your deity, of your God, if you're, if you're religious. Um, um, a, a divine existence. And you start to feel that within you. You start to integrate that within you. You start to integrate uh, this sense of oneness in, in humanity. And in stage 11, you've taken that all the way to full integration, complete connection of the self and every aspect of the self and the divine. And these are blissed out people. So I spend most of my days in stage 11 and it's, it's great. Um, this is where you really want your workers to be. Because if you have a team and it's critical that this team is working well together, you want people who understand and see the humanity in others. You want people who see the humanity in each other as they're working together. These are cohesive teams. These are our teams who are, that are willing to question things and come up with new ideas and new ways of doing things. These are teams that love to work together. They are not vying for power. There is no internal politics. There is none of that crap. It's just getting the job done and creating amazing new products, amazing new services, and they feel purposeful and wonderful. These are the people you want. So when it comes to your hiring practices, it behooves you to understand what stage someone is in before you bring them in. It's also really important to know what stage someone is in when you're trying to lead them, when you're trying to help them. So your next question is going to be, once you know what stage they're in, and it can become pretty obvious to identify it, what then? What do you do about it? Can you move someone from one stage to another? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. I do it with my students every single day. You absolutely can. You can get people out of the more detrimental stages and into more positive work <laughs> beneficial stage, you can do this. And we're going to talk about that in one of the next videos. So make sure you check out the whole playlist. Thanks for joining me with this one. We'll see you in the next one.